Hi, my name is Naomi. Welcome to my channel. Let's dream about beauty. So today I have an interesting get ready with me story time for you. I realize that you're probably shaking your head thinking, darn that girl's just clickbaiting us, telling us that she went head first down an outhouse. But actually it's a true story. And today I'm going to tell it to you. Um, unfortunately, this is my third time starting this filming. I've got half of my base on before I realized that my microphone wasn't working. Bow, bow, bow. Anyhow, so we'll just pick off, pick up with where I am at, which is basically I was just put my foundation on and I am blending out my my contour. So I uh, will start again at the beginning of the story, however. So when I was little, uh, about four years old, we moved from Grand Prairie, which is a town in northern Alberta, to a town a little further south named Edson. We moved on to a quarter section, um, about, I don't know, 15 minutes north of town. And the quarter section wasn't quite ready for us to move in yet. They moved the trailer on, but the indoor plumbing hadn't been set up yet. So my dad dug an outhouse for us to use for the first two or three weeks, or we called it a biffy. Uh, I don't know if any of you have ever used that expression before, but uh, we used, yeah, biffy meant outhouse. So my dad dug the biffy, and um, I don't know why they called it a biffy. That doesn't make sense. But it looked just like any picture of an outhouse that you might come across in any book or movie. It was, you know, a small, narrow little building with a shingled roof and a toilet seat and a big hole. And so um, my dad, um, when we moved, gave me a kitten. And I was, I still remember this day because I was so excited to get this kitten, like so excited. It was just, um, we'd had a cat named Silly. I don't know what happened to the cat. I don't remember. But, so we had a dog and then on when we had this little kitten and I just loved this little kitten and tried carrying it everywhere. But after we moved on to the farm, my cat, became quite wild and didn't really allow me to hold her and when I tried I got scratched pretty badly which was a never-ending source of irritation to my father. He did not like seeing me with cat scratches all over the place which I guess you can understand. Um, but you know the cat was happy roaming around meeting the boy cats and lo and behold the cat had a litter of kittens. So I'm going to guess that this was maybe, I must have been about five because I think it was, was either five or six. The Biffy hadn't been used in a while because of course we got our indoor plumbing all set up and the water put in and um, my sister was born and all that kind of stuff. So um, it was, uh, and I, I think it was late spring or summertime, uh, as I don't remember it being particularly cold out. And um, yeah, my cat had a litter of kittens, four kittens, which I thought was convenient because there were four of us, my two older brothers, myself, and my little sister, who was a baby. So I thought, yay, one kitten for each of them. The, cat, the kitten that became mine, I named Four Dots. Why, you ask? Well, because she had four dots on her back. Oh, that was a really original name. I went very out of the box to get that one, I'm telling you. So, um, anyhow, I, um, sorry, I just got distracted by trying to decide what shade of concealer to use. Um, so yes, the kittens by now are, you know, they're still pretty small, but they're big enough to roam around and they loved roam. I mean, like, wow, it was so cool. But they would still come back to the house to eat and sleep and whatever. And there, we had a shed that their mom would, you know, nurse them in and, um, it was like awesome. And then one day... 
I noticed that my kitten was missing. Because, I mean, the three kittens all came in, and I'm like, Mom, have you seen my kitten? And she's like, no, I haven't. And I it must have been, well, I, I don't have any recollection of how long it was until um, that the cat was missing, the kitten was missing, but uh, it must have been maybe a day later. My mom was in doing, you know, the farm errands and chores and things that had to be done. Farm errands? I don't think that's a word. I think you do errands in town and chores on the farm. Oh well. Um, so she was doing her chores and she walked past the outhouse and she could hear meow, meow, meow. So she's like, where is that noise coming from? That must be the missing kitten. And she walks into the outhouse and she can't see it. She walks around the outhouse, she can't see it. She walks, you know, around the vicinity of the outhouse, she can't see it. And then, but it sounds like it's coming from the outhouse. So she walks in and she peeks open the lid and there, there, uh, sitting daintily on the perimeter of the hole, kind of the ledge between where the hole was and the ledge where the, um, I don't really know. I only know is that there was a dirt ledge kind of around where all of the crap was. And and if anyone wants to scold my family for leaving a shitty outhouse, not torn down, whatever, this was in the back in the 70s when everyone did, you know, crazy things. Like, you wouldn't think of, like, it's an outhouse. What? And you know, you never know if your indoor plumbing is going to not work in the middle of winter and you need an outhouse. It was a contingency plan, what can I say? So, yes, my mom opens the toilet lid, toilet seat, and there, down in the shit, is my sweet little kitten. Well, of course, my mom freaks out. What are we going to do? And she runs to get my dad. And at this point in time, my dad, I don't remember if he was home or exactly when, but eventually it got to the point where, you know, we were all brainstorming, like, what are we going to do about this kitten who is down in the outhouse? Well, I can't really speak for what my dad, you know, thought about what we would do or you know how we were going to deal with this if he brainstormed a lot but all I know is eventually he asked my brother if my brother would assist in getting the cat and the plan was he was going to take my older brother and hold him by his ankles and lower him down through the hole grab the cat raise him back up again and everything would be fine. So, and those of you who are horrified thinking, oh my God, you would do this to your kid. I have to remind you, it was in the seventies. This is what people did. So, well, this looks actually, this combination of this Huda Beauty powder on top of the Too Faced concealer is looking pretty good. And then, all right, I'm just uh, bonking powder out onto my lid. So, my dad is pleading with my brother, like, please, could you please go and get the cat? Could you please go get, you know, could you please help out? And he started, you know, I'll give you money. I'll buy you chocolate bars. I'll take you here. I'll do this for you. I'll do that for you. But my brother was adamant that there was nothing in the world that could move him into being held upside down, down an outhouse to rescue a cat. And then my brother, after much uh, hullabaloo, finally said, well, why doesn't Naomi do it? And my dad turned to me and said, well, will you do it? And I said, 
Yes, I will. And here's the thing. I don't remember having any fear or hesitancy because I knew two things to be absolutely true that day. I knew that my cat, my kitten, would die if he wasn't or she wasn't rescued. And I knew for a fact, I knew this to be absolutely true, that my dad would never ever let anything bad happen to me. I knew that. And so I said yes, I would go and be held upside down, lifted down by my ankles, down the outhouse, through the toilet hole. He'd hold me and I could just quickly grab the kitten and he would pull me right back up again and I wouldn't have to touch any of the crap or anything. And so that's exactly what happened and that's what we did. And that's the day that I got to be a hero. Now, it's interesting to me because when we were in school, we all uh, wrote about this story. I've written about it multiple times in school. I mean, it's a good story. And uh, my brother wrote about it. My sister wrote about it. It was, you know, every time family gets together, we always kind of rehash the story and whatnot. And, you know, I can understand my brother not really being enthusiastic about going down the autos. Like, first of all, I was closer to my dad than he was. And secondly, I was smaller and it was my kitten. So I can understand that. Um, but here's kind of the sad part of the story. And that is that I lost my dad in a terrible, terrible accident in 1995. Um, he was driving a truck, a semi-truck, hauling, he was empty at the time. He was had a cattle liner on, going to pick up all a load of horses from a horse plant or a horse yard. Um, and he was taking them from Shelby, Montana, back into Canada to Southern Alberta and he was hit by a train and killed instantly. So I don't have my dad anymore, but I remember him telling me that he had never been more proud of me than he was at that time. But I wish that I had told him that he didn't really need to be proud of me because I had so much trust in my dad that I knew I knew that he would never let me fall. And this January, he's been gone for 25 years. And, um, you know, time has a way of taking away the sting of the pain of losing someone so it doesn't hurt as much. But I'm happy that I have this story to remind me of a time when my dad and I made a pretty good team. So, um, so that is the story of how I went down an outhouse. Pretty interesting, huh? Um, I guess for the rest of the video I'll just talk about the makeup because I'm done telling my story and I didn't think it would tell it so quickly. But there you have it. Okay, so for my bronzer I'm going to use this new cheek palette from Benefit. It's called Cheek Stars Reunion Tour. This is what it looks like. That's awesome. And I just got it yesterday. In the mail. I, I was so happy. So I'm going to use this JH00, sorry, 01 brush. And I hate this brush because it sheds really badly, but I didn't bring my other blush, other other blusher brushes. So I'm going to use Hula. Anyhow, you know, if any of you guys have family stories or similar type stories where I guess you're kind of called upon to do something extraordinary, um, I would love to hear about it in the comments. 
because it's not often that things like this happen, and I was so happy to have saved my cat. And then I remember when we gave the cat away to a, a different family, I was just devastated. I cried and cried and cried and cried. And my mom had to tell me that it would be okay because the cat, kitten had found, oh my God, I, I'm gonna have to throw this brush out because literally it has just shed everywhere all over my face. Like, oh, this is terrible. Like, my God. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, so, I was so devastated that my cat was being given away. My mom had to console me by telling me that she'd found a husband and fallen in love and did I want to deprive my kitten of a happily ever after? So she turned it into a fairy tale. <laughs> and guilted me into accepting my cat's departure. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> Anyhow. Well, she probably gave me a couple extra wagon wheels in my lunch or something like that because she tended to do that when I was that age. So... Anyhow, so anyhow, if you guys have any stories of uh, something similar, let me know. I would love to read them. And uh, I wish I'd, I wish I'd thought to tell my dad before he died that, you know, I. It wasn't a case of me being so particularly brave. It was that I just knew he would never let anything happen to me. And. You know, this cookie highlighter is like divine. So, so good. You know, and it's sad because, you know, I wish that my kids would have known their grandfather. I wish that, that they would have known, you know, had experiences with him and I wish that he could have known my kids that would have, he would have really loved that. Not that that has a lot to do with makeup, but um, okay, yeah. So so far so good with this benefit palette. It's for cookie sugar bomb. Dallas, the new, I think, is that a new one, new to benefit the Georgia one? And Hula, which is, you know, the iconic. I love these palettes, by the way, these um, larger benefit palettes, so very nice. I'm sure you'll be seeing that again in my, um, whatever, shot my, no, my haul video that I'll do the next one. Okay, so I am going to run away and do my eyeshadow primer and stuff, and then I will be right back. Okay, so I've got my eyeshadow primer on now, and then the palette I'm going to use is a new one for me. It's the Baby Got Peach palette. And I've got little hairs all over from that stupid brush that's shedding like crazy. Does anyone know anything about how to deal with a brush that keeps shedding just I don't really want to have to toss it okay so I'm going to start out with the uh, perky perky shadow increase area wow that's pigmented holy poop look at that I'm going to, okay, so in a situation like this where it's like so much more pigmented than bright than you thought, I'm just going to now tap it into place. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'll just tap it into place. And then I'm going to get a clean brush for blending.
I bet you, you know, when people really started talking, a lot of people have a lot of crazy pet stories, a lot of crazy things that they've done to save you know, a rescue pets like going out on a frozen lake to rescue a dog in the ice or, you know, rescuing animals from all kinds of dangerous situations. It's a good feeling to have when you know that you've made a difference in the life of something that's so small and vulnerable. Interestingly, like we did give away three of the four cats um, but one kitten became so wild that he was impossible to catch but my cousins who remained on the farm after we moved they said that occasionally they would see him so he had a nice long crazy life probably making lots of babies with all of the barn cats in the area So now I have two cats, one cat that was here when I moved in with my husband and that was almost 11 years ago and then the other cat is a boy named Misty which is an unusual name for a boy cat but my daughter went out on a sleepover and the family had recently had kittens and the one kitten that Kennedy fell in love with they thought was a girl and Kennedy the mom sent me a photo of Kennedy and the kitten and uh, I had to really pull out some strings to beg my husband not that you know I have to beg him for permission but when you get a pet ideally both people agree on it so I was trying to get him to agree so I talked to him about the time that I really wanted a horse and my parents were staying or living in Pincher Creek on an acreage and they had some land and so they were um, renting out their land to a friend who had a horse and he brought over his trailer and his saddle so I could go horseback riding whenever I wanted to and this was a dream come true I mean I was one of those girls who was just like infatuated with horses I still am I mean it's my dream to eventually retire on a coast somewhere and have a horse and ride on the beach and I think that just seems like oh, just wow but anywho I digress um, when I found out that the horse was for sale, I was devastated. And I had this idea or this fantasy in my mind that somehow, some way, somewhere, the horse could be mine. Her name was Roxy, I still remember that. But unfortunately, that did not happen and it, my dreams did not come true and that horse got sold. And I remember the day that the fellow who bought her came to pick her up. He loaded up the horse and I stood at the top of the property watching, bawling my head off. I would have been about maybe 21 or 22. I was devastated. Maybe 20. Maybe that's how old I was. Maybe 20. Yeah, that sounds about right. And I was just devastated that this horse was never going to be mine. So, of course, <laughs> when I'm talking to my husband, his name's Greg. I'm talking to Greg about this horse and I'm like I just want Kennedy to have her dream come true like mine never did please please let her have this kitten I just want to make her dream come true and so sure enough he gave in to my <laughs> pleading oh, my patheticness well not patheticness that's not the right word if that is even a real word Wow, this is a lot more orange than I thought it would be. All right, well, let's put on a shimmer and see how that goes. Ugh. My hair is everywhere. Okay, so, mm. Oh, that's not too bad. 
The only thing I wish this palette had was um, some way of like a sort of a deeper color so I could deepen up the crease. Oops, that's not the one I intended. Put that one down and get a different brush. I'm going to go in with a little bit of a lighter shimmer for just in the middle here. Oops. I'm so distracted now, I just keep thinking about cats and horses, <laughs> and I can't do my makeup properly. Oh my gosh. I do not know how people do these videos. This is my very first time trying to do like a story time type video, and it's kind of hard. It's hard to do makeup and talk about something that's completely unrelated to the makeup. I don't know if you guys are as in love with Bailey Sarian as I am and her murder mystery. I got my daughter watching it. My daughter's going to be 18 in like two minutes. So. Uh, if you're horrified, I'm letting my daughter watch it. She's an adult, so don't worry about that. Um, I love her. And I do not know how she does this, how she does her makeup. And then I guess it's practice. This is my first time, and maybe I'll get better at it. I feel like I did a lot of um and um ah, uh, um, but anyhow. Okay, I am going to do some eyeliner. I'm going to get some black eyeshadow to deepen up my edges, my corners of my eyes, and I will come back, I'll show you what it looks like, and then I will say goodbye and you can leave thinking about cats and horses just like I am. Okay, we'll be right back. Hello, I am back. Um, so I, <clears throat> so I did my eyebrows, I put on some eyeliner, I uh, darkened up just in here in the outer edge of my eye, um, just to ground the look a bit and put on some lipstick. So anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this uh, Get Ready With Me story time. Um, go and hug your cat, go hug your dog, go hug your horse or whoever. Go save somebody today. Try to stay out of the outhouses though, I don't advise it. Um, but it's a funny story from my childhood and I'm uh, happy that I could share it with you. Um, I appreciate you stopping by. Time is our most precious commodity and uh, you taking some time out of your day or night to uh, spend some time with me is, uh, is great. So um, yeah, wherever in the world you are, I hope you're doing well. Take care.